Exactly. So this this first this video that sort of has been going quite viral is and a young girl sort of runs past and this American bully comes for her and it ended up biting her. Um, fortunately, she survived. Welcome to the Animals Around the Globe Expedition. Then, yeah, welcome back to Animals Around the Globe. Today, with a bit more of a serious topic, we're going to look at the American bully, a descendant of the pit bull, and see where it's coming from, and look at a few recent attacks in the UK and discuss the banning of them. Welcome, yeah. Alex, our uh, aspiring vet, who is going to analyze with me these American bullies. Hi, yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks again for having me and yeah, creating a space for us to share a bit about what's been going on and maybe try to dive a little bit deeper into where these breeds came from and try to create a little bit of understanding and awareness and maybe some conversation with our viewers about their thoughts on the situation. Awesome. Yeah, let's maybe dive right in into yeah. where do they come from? I mean, we heard already they are descended of the pit bull, but how did they yeah. develop over time? Yeah, so in terms of their descendants, so they're actually bred from American pit bulls. So, and as we know, pit bulls, or if you don't, pit bulls were originally bred for dog fighting, for fighting in pits. They were used in bull in bull baiting and sort of like blood sports. So, as pit bulls and as American pit bulls, they were originally sort of bred with the intention of a slightly more blood sports aggressive tendency. So, those that obviously were more aggressive and winning fights were bred with to sort of maintain what their purpose was whilst pit bulls are no longer bred for this today, I hope, <laughs> especially those of us who've had really met really nice ones, um, they're no longer sort of aimed at that, but that is obviously where the genetic sort of lineage comes from. Um, and then the American bully that we're, is under question here and is, that has obviously come under fire in the UK and, you know, potentially facing this ban at the end of the year, they were bred sort of, I think the development of the breed started around 1980 and people sort of, we're selecting traits such as a larger size, because if you look at the images of these American bullies, they are a lot sort of broader. They seem more muscled. I mean, they can weigh up to 60 kilos. It's a really big dog for something that isn't as tall. You know, if you think like a Great Dane could weigh like 70 or 80 kilos and being really tall, these are 60 kilos, but sort of knee height or a little bit bigger. And they're quite broad, sort of muscular dogs. And yeah, so they were using American pit bulls and perhaps every now and then either a terrier or an English bulldog or something to bring a different characteristic in but the intention was for them to look like sort of quite big powerful fierce looking dogs um and they sort of became recognized as a breed around sort of 1990 and a little bit later um the pop movement was that yeah connection yeah, it was, yeah a little bit it's tough you know it's because of their looks they've become quite a i don't want to call them a fashion accessory because i don't like referring animals to that but to some people, I think that was the purpose of them buying them because of their aesthetics. They look angry, they look aggressive. And I think it was a look that some people aspired to and they sort of ended up being part of that, you know, movement. And yeah, it's it's interesting to see what they look like. And you'll also see in some of the videos or the images that um, we share with you, you'll see that sort of, I think, to enhance their anger, angry sort of looks. In the one video, you'll see two of the dogs have got these like cropped little ears. They look like little pointy triangles. And one of them has kind of floppy ears, floppy ears, or these sort of half up, half down sort of ears is exactly how they're born. But the ones with the pointy triangles are actually then cut or cropped is sort of mm -hmm. the formal word for them. Um, I'll say it here. It's not something I'm pro. Um, I really wish people didn't alter the aesthetics of dogs purely on looks alone. And I think something that keeps coming up in the news around this incident around Sunak um, and the ban, you know, the looming ban in the UK is American bullies in the UK are not actually an established breed, like as recognized by Breeders Association, um, whereas in America they are. And there are lots of risks, I think, when you don't have a formal Breeders Association because there's no stipulated breed standard, which is why it's going to take sort of until the end of the year, should this bill get properly passed and everything to go through, it, they need to now establish exactly what an American bully is, you know, what it looks like, its heritage, its breed. And then they're going to have to create this document that says which dog is an American bully and which isn't, because you can't then you can't just blatantly ban um, without having that. Um, so, yeah, it's some, they sort of 
that's I guess the task one for them. Um, and I just think I guess it's we can just note it here that there are different sizes of the American bully, but the one under question in other countries they call it an extra large, so it's the largest of the American bullies. In America, they just call them American bullies, but the other breeds then include, they call it a American bully nano or a mini or something. So they're a bit shorter and a bit smaller, but they still have quite similar facial features and they're after, often quite sort of built. And then, yeah, I think something else that whilst we're just chatting about the breed, one of the other issues without having sort of a breed association and breed standard is I think you just risk the general health care of the dog. You know, I think the breed integrity are people looking out for knee joints and, you know, both them being so muscled, can their joints handle it? And that's where if the breed such as the American bully, which became quite trendy and maybe breeders see, well, this is a great way to make money. Um, and, you know, I can understand that people want to make money, but unfortunately if everyone jumps on the bandwagon without sort of looking at genetics and what is the structure of the hip, what angle should it have? Where should there be more weight? You might start to see issues like hip dysplasia or knee joints sort of failing them from a younger age, which is also unfair because then dogs suffer. But yeah, that's obviously another story. Um, but if we go back towards sort of many breeders breeding these dogs, you also risk, are they looking at the genetic lineage? You know, did the parent show any aggressive tendencies? Because, you know, for the most part, they're advertised as family dogs and they were, they were bred with the intention of being companions. Unfortunately, their lineage happens to be a dog that was bred for aggression in its history. So mm. if we're not sort of really diving into who the parents are, you, I guess you never know. And there are responsible breeders out there. And I think there are breeders that have taken care, but there's now sort of this issue in the UK where they're saying in the last two years, sort of 70% of the dog attacks are American bullies. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Which is, which is a number hard to look, look away from. Right. Yeah. And if we yeah. look at one of these, you know, attack videos that we have here, we can see that, these attacks can happen really anywhere, right? We don't know what triggers the dog. And... Exactly. So this this first, this video that sort of has been going quite viral is, and a young girl sort of runs past and this American bully comes for her and it ended up biting her. Um, fortunately, she survived. Um, if you also look at the American bully breed, you know, they're, they can be quite heavy, they can be quite muscled and they have quite big jaws, which some people have likened to the ability to crush bones. Um, and unfortunately, there was a case in the UK, I think it's now about 10 days, two weeks ago, where a man was fatally wounded by an, by an American bully and he was killed. And yeah, it's it's a really, really difficult topic to say, you know, should you ban, should you not? But when I think you are close to someone who is on the receiving end of being fatally attacked by a dog who, yeah, I mean, I would never want a dog to attack me. I, I love dogs and I love all dogs, but it's hard to ignore, I guess, when this happens. And if we look at the photo of the young girl who, this is now another girl, and she was visiting friends and she knew the dog, she's patted the dog. There's no history of this dog ever doing anything aggressive. And all of a sudden it just turned. And I don't know if we can attribute that to, you know, is that its nature? Is that its lineage? Was it badly raised? I mean, we don't know, but they knew this dog to be a loving dog and it attacked this child and, you can only imagine as a mother that you would then be pro the ban. You know, if you've seen your girl being pinned down by an aggressive dog with it going for her face, um, how badly that could have gone as well. I mean, it did go badly, but she survived. Of course. And especially because we don't know, there are so many unknowns. Like, is it mm. the lineage? Is it, you know, something you can't get out of this type of dog? If that's yep. the truth, then, I mean, banning is one of the options that one has to yeah, yeah. do. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, everyone in the public deserves to be safe. And obviously that's the responsibility of government. And, you know, it's really hard because you want to say, no, that it's a dog. It comes down to the owners and the trainers, but are there, is there capacity to monitor every breeder with a breed that is number one, not established? Like there's no exact, who's the breeder, who's this, who's the parent. And if you don't have that, how do you then control which parent is known to be aggressive so that someone with expertise could then go in and say, well, that specific lineage or that specific parent is not allowed to breed puppies. So it, it can get really complicated. And I wonder if there's capacity to do that. Um, whilst that sounds more ideal, because should responsible breeders be punished for irresponsible breeders if we're then going down the road of maybe saying, if I'm now going down the road saying that, you know, perhaps these dogs were irresponsibly bred, um, but how do you sort of 
separate them um, from each other. And I think that's a lot harder than doing a blanket ban. Um, is it right? Is it wrong? Difficult. I think it's really difficult to say because I think it depends on you know your own personal feelings, but I also think it depends on your own interactions. And if you're the mother of a child who's been attacked by one, yeah, I would say ban them. Um, yeah. It's yeah. So yeah, I think it's it's very understandable, and uh, because of the unknowns that we have, there's there are not many other options that one could like consider. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but. Um, yeah i mean like in very interesting history of them um yeah. unfortunately ending in you know like many many accidents um yeah. many fatal accidents also so yeah. and they need to be prevented in the future for sure yeah yeah 100 percent. i think no one you got to look after the people i suppose and however this has come about i hope that they can resolve it and yeah, I think those that have responsibly bred, I hope that there's a way to, I guess, find a path forward and that they're sort of maybe not badly implicated for taking the care to breed well and with integrity. But maybe also a good note that to not buy dogs for aesthetics um, and to really look at what the suitable companion is for yourself and for your lifestyle and where you live. You know, if you're going to walk them in a public park, get something friendly. If you have children, get some a dog that has got a good history of being friendly with children. Um, and I guess, yeah, all dogs also need training. You know, even the cute, cuddly ones that sit on the couch, I think they all need stimulation and training and just ensure that you fall into the category of a responsible dog owner. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah, that is great advice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Alex. Alex.